Hello everyone, in this video you're about to watch, Apostle Joshua Selman explains why people should not reject the help of man. If you've ever been in a situation where you're not sure to accept or reject the help you're receiving from someone, Apostle Selman in this video helps us understand better. Be blessed as you listen. The Bible says a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. Everybody say was carried. My goodness. That doesn't look like a miracle till you hear me for a minute or two. The first miracle that happened to him was not his healing. But that certain man, watch this. They believed in him enough to carry him and lay him daily. Daily, not weekly. Have you ever attended to a sick person? There are times that even as the loved one of that sick person, you honestly get tired and weary. It is a miracle when men believe in you indefinitely when there are no results yet in your life. It's a real miracle. The Bible says certain men, he was carried, whom they laid daily. What is the first miracle? That certain men believed in him enough to carry him and lay him daily daily now connected to that miracle still the first miracle was where they laid him at the bible says they laid him at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful <laughs> they laid him at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful listen to me do you know what that means now i've studied that beautiful gate concept it was beautiful the word beautiful gate came there because other materials within the temple were made of gold and silver that particular gate was made of bronze but the bronze was so polished in fact it was called Corinthian bronze it was so polished to an extent that when light came it glowed and illuminated even more than the other doors beautiful gate they laid him there and the miracle started happening to his perception. There was something he saw at that gate. He could not see where he was coming from. There was something that he saw at that gate. He could not afford to see in his house. It mattered that what he was seeing was beautiful. Even though his life was ugly. Beautiful gate. Is someone learning? The first miracle was that certain men believed in him believed in him enough to carry him and lay him daily at a place which could start correcting his perception and building his faith this was what they did those men helped him they were the original foundation when you hear rise up and walk you credit it to peter and to john but i'm telling you you are wrong the first sponsors of those miracles were nameless, faceless, divine connectors and burden bearers. No name, but their impact could not be denied. When you receive a healing, it's easy to be credited to God through Joshua Selman. But the nameless person who told you come for koinonia, the nameless person who said, are you going for koinonia? Can I give you a lift? You don't even know the name of the person. The greatest miracles we celebrate are not usually the first to happen. There is always a build up of a foundation. When you celebrate a great, I don't know anybody who claps for foundations. We clap for buildings. This beautiful building is suspended from a very solid foundation. See that now? I know you celebrate the job. But how about the one who told you don't give up? Try applying one last time. The Bible says men who took him daily. Someone say daily. daily. The miracle is in their refusing to be tired. That they carry the fact that they carried him daily. Men they returned him back at night. He would not be left there every day. Why are you wasting your time speaking to my destiny? I'm already a failure. And mama says, not that you are my son. If it would take 20 years, I will know one day, God will raise a preacher to speak to you. Let me tell you, when you are clapping for me, make sure you clap for her too. God use both of us. 
it is amazing the amount of silent people who have played mysterious roles in our lives that may never be seen may never be congratulated they are not enlightened enough to be recognized and honored yet today we stand upon the foundation of those people remember the one who woke you up every night you were angry but you still went for the devotion today you are a pastor are we together remember your uncle who told you by 4 p.m return home you are still a child you said i'm 13 years he said go out of my house then if you feel you can make it on your own once you are under my care return home by evening that's the reason why you're a good father today you would have been a careless person roaming around around but someone planted that seed it was while you sat in one place that you had the opportunity to read a book that began to culture your mindset we owe those nameless people who refuse to be tired what if a night before the man's miracle the man said we have tried you too you know we have tried tomorrow we will not be around their consistency is what made the apostle to be able to look at him hmm. is someone learning I'm showing you how to access extraordinary dimensions these are just observations we're bringing out of that story hmm. so the first miracle that happened to this man was that certain men believed in him I've taught you that there are four kinds of destiny helpers can I recap for one minute that in your life as far as the ministry of men is concerned you will encounter four kinds of destiny helpers number one they are called divine connectors these men served as divine connectors they didn't have the power to heal the man but they were able to help him and take him where he could be healed number two men of influence these are the second groups of divine of destiny helpers men of influence they have the credibility they have the track record to be able to recommend you their names are keys they can open doors and gates for you number three gifted men you need gifted people they will close leakages and wastages from your life your organization one gifted man can have the strength of 50 people number four burden bearers I've taught you that burden bearers don't have the power to move you forward. Their assignment is to stop you from going backward. These are men who love you regardless. They don't love you because you are a preacher. They don't love you because you are CEO. They love you sincerely. That even when the crown is not on your head, they are still there. Even when you do not have the garment as Jesus, they are still there. May you find such men in your life. If you are surrounded by only people who celebrate the crown, the scepter, or the throne, you will be in trouble. Because the day your crown is not there. These are the three things that make a king. His crown, his scepter, and his throne. But there are times, even if you are Jesus, you will have to give up that crown, give up that throne, give up that scepter, and become a man. At such points, may God give you burden bearers remember another incident of burden bearers the men who tore the zinc and brought another crippled man they insisted that they wanted this man to be healed and on hearing that jesus was organizing a conference there was no way they could come in because of the crowd and the bible says they literally tore the roof and brought that man in in other words whatever consequence let it be on us and jesus said when he saw their faith one thing we learn from that scripture is the man who was crippled never spoke all those who did the speaking were his friends the man who needed the miracle himself was quiet that there are men who can stand up and take your matter on their head until you smile may god bring such people to your life in the name of jesus are you ready to see the second miracle that happened all right so number two the second miracle i hope i've not lost you the first miracle was the willingness of certain men to believe in him enough to carry him and to lay him daily 
without getting tired without expressing their anger or exhaustion and that they placed him at the gate beautiful a place that could begin to alter and correct his perception how many of you know that when you are kept close to a gate and you don't have the power to move you are forced to keep seeing it's not that he had the liberty to rest he would sleep and wake up and all that was before him was the gate and if you think what you see does not matter ask the cattle that jacob reared in laban's house what led to their multiplication their change of state something they saw are we learning the second miracle was the ability for that man this is where we give the crippled man credit the second miracle was the ability to look beyond his pain the ability to look beyond his legitimate resentments and to humble himself to be carried the second miracle that happened there was the ability for that man to look beyond his pain and to allow himself to be carried every day is one thing to want to carry the man but the man had the power to say i'm tired of this mockery he would have called that help mockery it takes a lot of humility to look beyond your pain especially because we live in a world where we hate drawing sympathy nobody wants to be told hey yeah it's not sorry eh do you think they just carried him silently i'm sure one day they would carry him what if the man wanted to use the toilet what if the man wanted to take his bath it would look like mockery but they had to carry him the humility to look beyond his pain legitimate anger and resentment and allow himself to be carried is someone learning it takes a lot of humility the scripture is coming to my mind thank you jesus what scripture is that now help us luke 16. i think that's luke 16 a parable that jesus gave about an arrogant man who was ashamed to beg look for it look either verse 1 2 or 3 media help me Luke chapter 16 yes watch this just the first three or four verses and he said please let me have your attention unto the disciples Jesus now there was a certain rich man which had a steward he had a what steward a caretaker and the same man was accused that he had wasted his goods. So the steward of the rich man was a careless man. Verse 2. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship. He said, For thou mayest be no longer a steward. I'm going to fire you. Watch what the man said. Verse 3. Beautiful. This is what I'm looking for. Then the steward said within himself. Are you seeing pride now? What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me stewardship. I cannot dig and to beg I am ashamed. There are people like this. Give us NIV. Say, verse 3. NIV please. Or amplified anyone. The manager said to himself, What shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. Watch this. <laughs> I am not strong enough to dig and I am ashamed to beg. May you not be like this. That a man can lack capacity and yet even where help can be offered, he said, I am ashamed. It's a miracle when you find a man who is humble enough to be carried. There are people today, if only they have the opportunity and the humility to ask, please, God is helping me, but I have a situation right now with my house rent. I am not careless can mercy be shown me shame can be taken away with one alert but they can remain there punish their wives punish their children punish everybody i'm too big to beg i know what to do there are people who are too big to be prayed for there are people who are too big to be counseled it's a miracle when a man becomes humble enough to be carried every day maybe once a while that's all, all right but every day it is extreme humility to not only carry a man but that the man allows himself to be carried can you allow yourself to be carried on the wings of prophecy 
one day you'll be able to walk but while you are still leprous can you allow even if you are moses you will be carried for a while even if you are jesus you'll be carried for a while one day you will save the world but not as a baby while you are a baby herod can kill you allow joseph and mary to carry you to the place of safety moses you are born a deliverer but not as a baby look left and right and you will see the dead corpses of children that have been wasted because they are searching for you if help comes while you are rising don't reject it did you hear what i said if help comes while you are rising please don't reject it when you find genuine help don't reject it if i were that man i don't know how many times my ego will be stung but one thing i know i would have obtained grace to do was to say thank you every day that while these men carry me on the way to the gate beautiful i will say gentlemen i do not take your generosity for granted i don't have the power to help myself but thank you at a point they'll be tired and say don't stop saying thank you every day but i will reply by telling them for as long as you carry me that thank you must come out of my mouth someone say thank you jesus that's the greatest person you owe thanks some of you never say thank you jesus till you come to church say thank you jesus ah for life for strength for health thank you jesus for salvation for healing for my mindset the transformation happening thank you for the anointing you are bringing to my ministry thank you someone say thank you someone say thank you when you are carried give thanks when you are carried give thanks when you are helped by god and helped by man give thanks give thanks never take the help of god and the help of men for granted give thanks give thanks i hope that man went back to look for those people to say thank you when he received his healings beware of times when your helpers do not need to help you again because god has taken you forward still don't forget them if they were in your yesterday they still deserve your thank you don't just say thank you because they are helping no it's been 10 years now you don't need their help again you are now a millionaire that is the foolishness of many people helped by parents helped by preachers helped by destiny helpers when god helps them to become they do not have the fortitude to reach back to say thank you not to god nor to men some of you may need to think about people who did something yesterday in your life and obtain grace one thousand hundred thousand what for i've not heard from you for 15 years just to let you know that i remembered something you did before they were about to carry me to a herbalist and you said no come and keep me keep this boy in my house i would train the child and he trained you for three years don't say only three years and don't send them a text saying many people have helped my life you are one of them that's an unwise way to say thank you when you are saying thank you to people don't do that don't say many people have changed my life just to let you know you are one of them don't make the ability to carry you to the gate look insignificant they didn't have the power to heal you but if peter did not see you you would die a leper are we together i know that the person did not have the power to pay your school fees but he took you from the village to the city i know you say he's, he insulted you every day i agree learn the lesson and don't do that to your children but it's too small a reason to say he was a bad man as much as he insulted you you don't know the quarrel he had with his wife in the bedroom every day to send you back and the man said no the child may be stupid but leave him give him a chance two more years that's how you got admission today you have become a great person don't look back and say that useless uncle may he even die make sure you find something after this teaching send it to him he can even reply you and say, so you are now wise enough. You don't mind him. You just do what? <laughs> hmm. This is koinonia. Say, rise up and walk. The second miracle that happens to every man that happened to this man, building up to that wonderful one you call the miracle, was... The ability to fuel the help in his life by lavishing gratitude and the ability to take responsibility to be humble 
to say every time I am helped is not weakness are we together now yes you are trusting God to start putting one block after another and God brings a blessed person who says you know what I want to do something for your family there is a three-bedroom flat here I'm doing it because I love you sincerely take now there are times that the wisdom you need to apply I know there are times that collecting certain things is like selling your birthright but this discussion is under normal spiritual conditions void of hatred and whatever it is when help comes receive it all help can compress time did you hear what I said help can compress time <laughs> someone met me one time I think he was tired of applying for a visa and they kept rejecting and the guy got angry he believed that the spirit was stopping him and so he stood for me to pray and I said okay just tell me how are you doing it and when I saw what he was doing I said you will not get this thing this way that's not how it works you see and I looked at him and I knew he was not listening to me now who is who is at a loss the guy wants and he's, I'm, I, you could imagine in his mind I'm the one I have a rev I know the spirit that that stops me unfortunately those to stamp the visa don't care what spirit is pursuing you you will still keep going back look help makes things easy learn this the assignment of help is to make anything possible and then to make it easy did you get that the assignment of help is to make things possible and to make things easy.